culture of the 1920s. This is usually the part people like to talk about. The Scopes Trial, sometimes called the Monkey Trial. Um, for our purposes, the big thing for this is just showing you that whole idea of the traditional mindset versus the new modern mindset. And what this was was a teacher that was wanting to teach um, evolution in his science class. And um, he was arrested for teaching it, and then uh, he was put on trial. And the big thing with this is it drew nationwide attention because you had um, William Jennings Bryan as a special prosecutor who is um, somebody that we've seen in politics. And then you have Clarence Darrow who defended Scopes. And so this trial became um, broadcast over national radio. Um, it was um, Darrow even cross-examined Bryan on um, being saying he was an expert on the Bible. Um, in the end... You know, Scopes was convicted of teaching evolution. He had to pay, you know, he was fined a whole whopping one dollar, but that was later set aside. But the bigger deal was the um, the principle of the thing, that, you know, um, going from this traditional teaching from the Bible to uh, some more modern ideas. Also during this time is when prohibition is passed. And um, the whole, this whole was, idea was started at the end of the 1800s. And they saw that liquor caused poverty and crime. So a lot of women especially really fought for prohibition. So it was finally passed in uh, 1919. And um, some Americans didn't like it. They thought that it wrongly, it wrongly imposed one group's moral beliefs on another. Um, some of the issues that are going to come out of prohibition, you're going to have um, people losing jobs because you have breweries and you have um, saloons or the liquor industry, but those people don't have jobs anymore. The biggest thing that's going to come out of this is the rise of organized crime. So your mobsters, your gangsters are going to start from this because they're going to try to find a way to get alcohol to Americans and it's going to lead to that rise of organized crime. The role of women changes very much during this time. So here's a picture of women. Um, I'm going to say roughly the like 1912, 1913, something like that. And see, you notice, I just want you to notice what they're wearing. Um, you know, long sleeves, long dresses, um, very plain. Their hair's all up in buns with hats on and um, high necklines. And um, so women during this time are going to be very reserved. And then during the 1920s, you're going to have, um, women are going to get the right to vote, which is going to give them a new freedom. You're going to have new household appliances that's going to reduce how much work they have to do. More women are going to go to college. Um, more women are going to work. And so they get feel more economic independence. And so this is going to lead to a change in manners and morals. So during this time, you're going to have women that are going to go from being, um, you know, you taking care of the house, taking care of the kids, and that's all they do to actually going out and working. Um, they even begin to smoke and drink in public. Oh, the scandal. And then uh, they start wearing, you know, the dresses that are the shorter, more revealing dresses as we know as flappers. Um, so this is a huge change for women during this time. So they go from looking like this to dressing like this, which is a huge change. Uh-oh, we can see legs. We can see arms. How dare they? Also, during literature, during this time, we have a um, we have a good resurgence of literature and music. Um, the Harlem Renaissance is going to be a major uh, literary movement for Af the African American community. Langston Hughes is going to be one of your major poets during this time. We have um, a quote. Here's a poem from Langston Hughes. You never know; you may see a poem on the EOC. Um, it's titled "Democracy." Democracy will not come today. This year nor ever through compromise and fear. I have as much right as the other fellow has to stand on my two feet and own the land. I tire so of hearing people say, let things take their course. Tomorrow is another day. I do not need my freedom when I'm dead. I cannot live on tomorrow's bread. So this is kind of a way for him to um, show pride in his heritage and to kind of um, address some of the issues such as racism in our country through literature. Um, Ten Pan Alley is going to be a musical movement during this time, 
And it's going to also be in New York City. And it's going to be um, where blues, jazz, and ragtime music were all melded together. Also during this time, because you have more appliances made, you have more money, you have more time to um, do things besides take care of your home and your children. So you're going to have a rise in mass entertainment. You're going to have people start listening to radios. You're going to have people going to baseball games and watching Babe Ruth play baseball, among others. Um, they're going to have time to go to movies and see Charlie Chaplin in a um, silent film. You're also going to have this whole idea of celebrity, which comes up in the 1920s. And Charles Lindbergh is probably the biggest celebrity of the 1920s, and that's because he's the first person to fly across the Atlantic Ocean by himself. So how might this era be assessed? So here's a question from the released EOC. During the 1920s, what was one result of innovations in U.S. transportation technology? So we're looking for a result of innovations, and innovations is kind of like, has to do with inventions. In U.S. transportation technology, transportation is going to be like cars, planes, trains, that kind of stuff. So... What's going to be the result of all of this um, new invention and improvement in transportation technology? Is it going to be F, commercial airplanes replaced ocean liners as the primary means of travel to Europe? Um, well, we didn't see commercial airplanes means like American Airlines takes you on a flight across the ocean. During this time, air, the air industry is still very, um, it's in its infant stages. It hasn't gotten to the point of commercial airliners yet. So you still have ocean liners as the primary means of travel. So that's not going to be correct. Um, Mass-produced automobiles made travel more affordable for many people. This is that assembly line is kind of what they're referring to. So when we have assembly line automobiles, they're going to be cheaper and easier to buy, so they're going to be more affordable. So I'm going to keep that one in mind. H, cable cars provided a comfortable means of quick travel to any city within a state. That means you would have a cable that would be connected across the entire state of Texas that would take a car and take you from, say, Dallas to Houston. I don't know about you, but I don't remember reading anything about cable cars taking us across the state. And then J, container ships delivered agricultural goods to ports along the Pacific coast. Um, this is not, this may be happening, but it's not a result of inventions of transportation technology. So our correct answer is going to be G, mass-produced automobiles may travel more affordable for many people.